Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Proverbs Path. These are This is my devotion for today. Uh, my name is Janet Archibald, and I'm the Administrative Assistant at River Heights Vineyard Church. And I'm glad you're joining me today. My cat is in the room with us, so she may be making an appearance. She's been a little bit of trouble. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, whenever you join me, uh, make whenever you join us, make sure to say hi in the comments. Uh, love to interact with you guys uh, and see you here with me. Um, so yeah, drop a comment, say hi, interact with us while I do this devotion. Cat is clawing at my blanket. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I wanted to start. Um, by thanking Courtney. <laughs> uh, Courtney is, maybe we can call her my partner in crime. <laughs> uh, no, 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 let's, let's say my partner in devotion. <laughs> I like that much better. Um, hello, Denise, it's nice to see you here with us today. Uh, God bless you as well. Um, so I work a limited number of hours at the church, and um, as we were doing these devotions, I realized that I couldn't do this every week um, and still fit in everything that I needed to do. So uh, I had asked Courtney uh, to do this. She joined me when we were back writing these uh, in Instagram, so before the pandemic, and I, I just so appreciate Courtney's, um, Courtney's heart and her wisdom and the fact that she does this with her kids at home. Uh, my kids are at school, so I have a nice quiet house besides a cat that's playing with a ball at my feet. Um, so Courtney, I thank you so much for joining me and doing these devotions. You're doing an awesome job, uh, even with, with kids in the background, especially with kids in the background. Uh, so thank you for sharing your heart with uh, your heart for God with us. And we, we really appreciate you doing these devotions with us. Uh, all right, uh, well, today we are continuing to talk about Proverbs. Uh, we are in chapter 19 of Proverbs. And um, as I was reading through um, our my choices of, of Proverbs to talk about, um, I was remembering Pete's sermon from Sunday. And on Sunday, Pete talked about uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and what love is. And 1 Corinthians 13 has always been a favorite of mine. Um, there are just so many different exercises that you can do with this chapter to, that can draw you closer to God and learn his ways. Um, and it's just, it really is a beautiful, um, a beautiful chapter. Um, encouraging, maybe challenging, um, but it's it's a chapter about love. How awesome is that? Um, and as, so I mean, there's just so much in there that can just really bring you closer to God and, and really um, help you live a life of love. And as Pete preached about on Sunday, this chapter of First Corinthians can also help us to learn like more about what love is and it can encourage us to make love a priority in our lives. Um, so as I said, I found um, I found a verse in Proverbs 19 that seemed to be related a bit to um, some of the verses in 1 Corinthians 13. Um, so I thought that we would look at that verse in Proverbs 19 today uh, and kind of see what it says um, about living a loving life um, and see what we might get out of it. So why don't we uh, start with some prayer and then we'll look at our verse for today. Dear God, um, we thank you for today, even though it is it is a cold February morning. Um, you know, the sun is shining, God, and we see your glory and your creation and your goodness. And I pray that we carry you in our hearts each and every day and that we are able to apply your words to our lives. Um, some of these may be harder than others, but we know that your way is good, God. And so may we, we, may we be reminded of that and be reminded of your love for us 
and how you are guiding and encouraging us along your path. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Proverbs 19, 11 says, sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. I think the English Standard Version, version says it beautifully as well. This translation says, good sense makes one slow to anger and it is his glory to overlook an offense. So let's compare this to 1 Corinthians 13, four through seven. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. As I was thinking about these verses, I, <laughs> the perfectionist in me actually took over and I started thinking about how hard these verses are because I know that I am not always patient and kind. I can get jealous, uh, jealous and I can boast or become proud or rude. I think all of us could probably go through this list found in 1 Corinthians 13 and find multiple examples of when we didn't show love. But thankfully, <laughs> I realized that, that the Bible is not a list of how to be perfect. If we were perfect, we wouldn't need Jesus. Probably wouldn't need the Bible either. The point of the Bible is to guide us and to help us. And that is what our verse is about today. These verses are not condemnations, but signposts on how to live a good and beautiful life. So where are the signposts in Proverbs 19.11 pointing us? Our passage from 1 Corinthians tells us that love is patient and not irritable and does not keep a record of being wronged. Proverbs 19.11 says that a sensible or wise person is slow to anger and overlooks a wrong or offense. This proverb seems to be pointing us to a loving way of life. When we are slow to anger, we are able to live with more peace, not just within ourselves, but in our workplace, in our homes, or really wherever we, wherever we go. And that peace not only affects us, but those around us as well. And with that peace, we are able to be more clear-headed and are better able to see what needs to be done to solve whatever situation is causing us to be angry. Being slow to anger is something that takes time and patience and repentance. <laughs> that can be hard. Overlooking wrongs done to us? Well, yeah, that can be pretty hard as well. I mean, there's so many wrongs done to us. There are so many wrongs in this world and those wrongs have, have hurt us deeply and they've hurt a lot of people pretty deeply. I mean, for an example, this is the second day of Black History Month and there are a whole lot of wrongs that have caused a whole lot of hurt to those in the black community, not just in our country, but around the world. Is this passage really saying that we should just overlook those wrongs? Well, no, not really. Our God is a God that loves justice and is working every day to bring justice to all. We can even point to our passage today in 1 Corinthians um, as an example of this. It says that love does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. God is love and God rejoices when truth and justice win out. So this passage is not saying to ignore the wrong done to us. It is calling us to forgive. Forgiving is not about condoning the wrong, but about transforming the hurt that was caused to us and transforming that so that the wrong done to us no longer has control or power over us. It's about letting go, letting God work and moving forward. It's in letting God work it's in letting God work in us and through us 
as well as moving forward, that we are able to take the wrongs that were done to us and work on making things right. I want, I, I want to close by sharing what biblical commentator David Gusek wrote about this verse, because I think his words wrap all of this up really nicely. He says, a wise man or woman knows that they have been forgiven much. And this shapes how they deal with others. They don't act as if they must hold everyone accountable for every transgression, but know when to overlook a transgression. So as God has forgiven us, we are called to forgive others. So this signpost in Proverbs 19.11 is pointing us to deal with others in love and forgiveness just as God loves and forgives us. So let's pray. Dear God, we love and forgiveness can be very hard, especially when there's some deep hurt that has been caused. I pray over all of us, God, because I know that there is a lot of deep hurt in this world. We need your, we need your love. We need your forgiveness. We need your guidance. And I pray that we can, that we continue to turn to you, continue to lean on you and the words that you have shared with us in the Bible. May that encourage us and strengthen us and lead us to a life that is filled with love and forgiveness. And through this, God, may we help right the wrongs. I just pray that the wrongs done to us no longer have any power or control over us and that we all can lead a life that leads to more peace, more love, more compassion, just a stronger sense of community and for a lack of better word, love. <laughs> that seems to be the word of today. So God, guide us in this. Forgive us when we stumble. Help us to practice these things. Keep practicing these things. And may we find that they become easier and easier over time. Thank you for your love and forgiveness, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So is there an area, like an offense in your life that has been hard to overlook or forgive? Would you like to grow in patience, forgiveness, being slow to anger, or any of the other attributes found in our first Corinthians 13 passage? If you answered yes to any of these questions, or if anything else I mentioned today resonated with you, I invite you to write amen in the comments and we will pray for you. Otherwise, you can write your short prayer request or praise report in the comments and we will also happily pray for you. As always, if you're uncomfortable writing amen or your prayer request in the comments, you can email me at janet at riverheightsvineyard.org and I will happily pray for you. Uh, Denise, I thank you for your comments. You are so kind. Yeah, nobody's perfect. And yeah, we need all the help from God that we can, that we can take, right? Um, so yeah, I, I pray that you all have a wonderful day and um, yeah, I, like I said, I know that these things are hard and I just feel that, I pray that you feel God's power and presence with you, walk, helping you walk through these things. Um, so that's all I have for today. Um, happy Groundhog's Day. I love it, it's 2 two twenty two. lots of twos today, that's kind of fun too. <laughs> um, make sure to join us at 10 a.m. on Friday. Um, not sure if Justin will be able to join us on Friday, um, but that would be when our next devotion would be. Um, otherwise, Jeff will join us on Monday um, at 10 a.m. for his devotion. Also, don't forget that our life groups are starting next week. Um, so you can sign up for a life group um, at riverheightsvineyard.org. It's under our Get Connected tab. You'll see a life group link that you can click on. And um, yeah, this life groups are just such an awesome way to connect. Um, and we're going through some awesome material this semester. Um, it's going to be really great, um, whether you've been a Christian for a long time or if you are just starting out or you're curious about 
about God and Jesus, um, we'd love to have you join us at one of our life groups. Um, yeah, so that's it. Stay warm. Um, may God encourage you and bless you through this day. All right. We will see you later.